Welcome to Power Wet, uh, brought to you by Power and Praise Ministries. We are a ministry that believes in the Word of God, developing people and changing lives. You do follow us uh, and follow our message and give us feedback. There are numbers which are put on the screen there where you can phone us and then communicate with us. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, let's get into the Word. Today, our message is Built for Impact. Built for Impact. We're going to get our scripture from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The Bible reads, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. One thing that you need to tell yourself when you wake up in the morning is to say, I'm built for impact. Everything that is great was built. Every career was built. Every great business was built. Every great marriage was built. Everything outstanding, it was built. It did not just appear, but somebody took some time to build it. So you need to wake up in the morning and tell yourself, I am built for impact. I am built for impact. Now, greatness takes a building partnership of both God and men's involvement. For you to be great, there must be an involvement of God. There must be a, a, your involvement as well. So working together with God, you can build great things. So when you strive for greatness, you must know that God has to be involved in anything that is great. Genesis 2 verse 15 says, And, God, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, right from creation, there was partnership between God and man. The Lord God took man and put him in a garden and he says, dress it and keep it. Now, he did not just dump the man into the garden, but he put him in there knowing that great partnership has begun. So, God plants, man dresses. God does the planting, man will dress. God put man into a garden and says, now you can keep the garden and you must dress it. So, the, your job is to dress while it's God's, way, God's job is to do the planting. Now, Psalms 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake but in vain. Now, watch the scripture here. There's two groups of people, God building and men building. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that they build it. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman stays awake. So there is God's God building here, and then there is some men building here. But he that builds all things is God. Glory to God. Two groups of people. God building, men building. This is the secret of a great destiny. If you really want to have a great destiny, the secret is God must be in partnership with you or you be in partnership with God. Now, if you watch uh, uh, the scriptures, I'm going to go through some few scriptures. Hebrews 3 verse 44 says, For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Every house is built. There must be a man and there must be a God to build. Friends, it's not luck. I've listened to people we have gone higher than me in ministry. And I found out that there is some scriptures that they've discovered that I have not seen before. Now, when you see somebody who has gone too higher than you, don't just look at them and say, maybe it's, uh, no, I think it's people they don't. No, 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 no. There is something that they've discovered. If you really want to go higher, if you really want to do greater things, there must be a great partnership between you and God. Glory to God. Now, between you and God, the higher your light, the higher you rise. Bible says, arise, Isaiah, arise and shine for your light has come. Now, the higher your light, the higher you rise. Find scripture because everything is written in the scriptures. The things that you need to discover in the word of God. And when you discover, the, discover those things, your ministry will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same again. Your conduct will never be the same again. Yes, many times we study scripture. We don't, I don't really study scripture 
for me to have more scriptures in my head. I start the scripture to better my life. I start the scripture to open my eyes. I start the scripture to move me forward. So when you look at the scripture, find the scripture and say, how do I partner with God? What is the scripture saying to my partnership with God? Because I want to be built for impact. Now, Psalms 118 verse 22, it says, The stone which the builders refused is become the head stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. No matter how shattered you are, God will restore your building, God will restore your life, God will restore your business. Doesn't matter how shattered you are. It says, the stone whom the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, in our weakness, God will manifest Easter. He says, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in weakness. So, when, in your weakness, when you are in partner with God, God says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And then he says here yeah, uh, 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 in Philippians 1 verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, shall in, in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Him who began a good work in you. It is God who begins things. It is God who starts who, who start things. It is God who does the planting. Glory to God. If you understand that, it's not you who begin things. It is God who begins things and you partner with God. You shall become great. You shall be built for, for impact. Now, if you want to know, or maybe can I ask a question, are you ready to do your part? As God is handling your case. Because God is the one who handles your case. But you must be able to do your part. Do your part in the building. Do your part in the, in the building as you go forward. Because God plants. You dress. God does the planting. And we do the dressing. We don't leave all the work to God. We don't leave all the work and say, no, God is merciful. You f I'll find mercy in God. Let me just relax. God will fight all backlash for me. God says, while I'm fighting backlash for you, rise up and go to, the, go to the battlefield. Because I've already gone ahead of you. We need to be people. If you really want to make impact in this continent or make impact in our, in our ministries, make impact in our nations, we need to build together with God. We must do our part as God is doing his part. Glory to God. Now, we need to, as we do our part, we need to have the same passion as God has. Do you have the same passion of building that business the way God has? The same passion as God has? That's what you need to sit down, sit down and think about. It. How is my passion? What is my passion? What is my passion in building up that, that business? What is my passion in doing that study, in doing that degree? What's my passion in doing that master's? What is my passion in doing the doctorate? What is my passion in doing that thesis? The passion which God has, if you put it together with your passion, when it comes together, great things will happen. But if you don't have passion, God is always having passion. If you don't have passion, you are suppressed. You need to lift up your passion to come to the standard of where God is and then you move forward and God will surely come in for you. If you don't like your situation, don't complain. Start to build. Don't complain. Start to build. Start to rise up. Many people will say no. But pastor, uh, look at me. Uh, uh, my situation is like this. My ministry is not doing very well. My, the passion. What is your passion? What is your passion? If you have a passion, God will take you far. I said there are two groups of people. God building, man is building. God building, man is building. Like, let me put it back in, in, in terms of ministry. In a church, you are the pastor, or I'm the pastor. And I've got leaders. I've got the congregation. Now, if I'm the one who is building, and then I have partnership with them, the work of God is so limited. What I need to do is I need to bring God to partnership with me as I build. So that the people who partner with me in ministry, they will know that I've got a higher partner. 
and everything will correspond. But if I'm building without God, everything will always come to nearly, it nearly, it nearly. The things not always to be so. Now, I said every house is built and there must be a man and there must be a God. Glory to God. Now, Philippians 1 verse 6. Let me just get it. Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in me. Now, first of all, before we quote the scripture, before the scripture is exciting, we need to check which work is in me. Is it a good work? Or is it a bad work? Because God does good work. If I look at my life, if I look at how I'm doing things, is this God? Is this what God started in me? If I feel like, no, if I see that, no, this is not it, let me ask God to build a good work in me. Number one, in my life, in my salvation, in my conduct, in my doing things, God is a God who does good things, who does a good work. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in me will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, it's him who does the performance. God is a God of performance. He will perform a good work in you if you are in partnership with him. Are you ready to do your part? As God is handling that case. Glory to God. Now, if you don't like that situation, I say it. Begin to ask for change. Begin to pray for change. Lord, I don't like my financial situation. Now, after crying, begin to make changes. Begin to make changes. Maybe wake up from the bed. Find a job. Wake up from the bed. Start up a small project, a business. Because you are looking for change. Him who began a good work in you will see come to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. God says, listen, Jesus Christ is still on the throne. I will see the work come to completion. Rise up and begin to change your situation. If your marriage is not working, rise up and begin to change some things. Begin to drop some things and begin to adopt some good things and involve them into your marriage. Don't drop your wife. Don't drop your husband. But drop the attitude. Drop the wrong, wrong conduct and begin to adopt the rightful things. And God says, I have begun a good thing in you. I have begun a good work in you and I will see it come to completion. Now, Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Many plans in a man's heart. Many devices in a man's heart. You know, human being is like a, 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 a very heavy computer. I, 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 I've not yet met a computer man who has done a memory uh, 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 disk which is bigger than the man's brain. I don't know what terabyte a man's brain has because I still remember when I was going to preschool. I've been married for 28 years now. I, but I remember, I even remember the teacher who taught me at preschool. It has never been deleted in my mind. <laughs> that is the man's brain. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, man has devices. Now, in that brain, I still remember where I went to preschool. Because that's what I think, I, I thought of wanting to remember. And what I've forgotten is what I did not care for or care about. But when I begin to say, listen, I need to really focus on this matter. God has given you a memory drive which cannot be erased. You've got the biggest memory than any computer on earth. Many are the devices in a man's heart. Man's heart. Now, the memory of it, look at it. It's not even in the brain only. It's in the heart. God says in the heart. Now, Men always decide to think about wrong things. 
That's why uh, uh, someone will say, hey, this one has got a bad heart. They're talking about the memory. What you are thinking with your heart. What you are thinking the heart. Why people rap? Why people murder? Why people do crime? It's because of the heart. But God says, in the, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord. It means every human being is God the good part and the bad part. Every human being. Doesn't matter whether you're a pastor, whether you're an apostle, whether you're a reverend, whether you're a prophet, whatever. there is a good part in you and there's a bad part in you. But what is going to prevail is the counsel of the Lord. That's why we need the word of God to give us counsel so that you can be guided. You can't wake up in the morning and say, I'm, I'm perfect. I've made it in life. No, 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 no. Everybody needs the counsel of the Lord. Many are devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. It doesn't matter how talented you are today, you can be frustrated tomorrow. It doesn't matter how much clever you are or how much knowledge you have, tomorrow you can be even down. Until you say, Lord, show me your direction. Until you cry to the Lord and say, show me your direction. When I was growing up, I don't know whether it's still there now, but when I was growing up, we used to, every township, used to have somebody, when, you, when your parents send you to the shops to buy bread and milk in the morning, there's always one guy in that community who got degrees and degrees, but he has lost his mind. Who is always sitting in the shops or something like that. He speaks good English, he knows all things, but he's miserable. So knowledge without the counsel of the Lord, uh, education without the counsel of the Lord, can get you like living like a vagabond. Doesn't matter how talented you are. Until you say, Lord, show me your direction. Moses was a man. 40 years living in Pharaoh's house. Another 40 years in the wilderness. Then, after 40 years, he saw a burning bush. And when he saw that burning bush, His destiny was going the wrong direction until he saw the, the, the burning bush. And when he showed interest, he looked at the burning bush and God called him. Does it mean that God had not called him? God had called him even before. God had preserved him from day one. That is going to be servant of God. But because he was now moving in his own counsel and God left him until he started sorting for the counsel of the Lord, the direction came. We see another one, Jacob. Jacob was a man. Some of the uh, Bible scholars will call him a trickster. Uh, we shall discuss about that one day, uh, about Jacob being a trickster. I don't believe that he was a trickster because it had been ordained that the, the, old, the older shall serve the younger. So the mother operated in a form of the Holy Spirit in advising the young son what to do because she had heard what the Holy Spirit was saying. So we'll discuss about that the other day. But look at Jacob. Jacob went there. He did all kinds of things. He did all that until his name changed from Jacob to Israel. His life was miserable, although he carried a blessing. Ask, ask God today, God, what did you create me for? You know, those are the kind of questions that you need to ask. God, what did you create me for? Did you create me on earth to be miserable? Did you create me on earth to be a question mark? Did you create me on this earth here to become a burden? Am I? No, I, I, I like to ask life questions many times, even when I'm alone or when I'm walking in the street. I ask myself, what did I come to earth here for? Did I come here, at, here for so that I can be counted uh, in, the, in the census? And then one day when somebody dies, they'll count how many people have died? No, I don't believe so. I believe that I was created for impact. God created me for impact. And I still have to discover my potential so that I can become impactful on this earth. There are generations that are waiting for you. Your nation is waiting for you. Your community is waiting for you. They're coming, waiting for you to manifest. But what were you created for? Ask God, what did you create me for? Decisions in your heart is the key. What are you deciding? What are you planning? When you decide, are those decisions 
going to impact the nation or they're for selfishness. You are a manager or you start a business. What did you start a business for? Is it to enrich yourself? Fine, it's okay because you start business to make profit. Yes, it's true. But what is the purpose? Are you wanting to impact the nation? Are you wanting to better the people's lives? By your product? Is your product beneficial to people? Are many lives are going to benefit out of you? Are many families going to benefit out of you? What are you there for? Look around your life. How many people are you impacting right now? How many people are you impacting right now? Where you are standing? You are 15 years old. How many people are you impacting? You are 30 years old. How many people are you impacting? You are 40 years old. How many people are you impacting in your life? You are 60 years old. How many people are you impacting and how many have you impacted? How many people will remember you if you disappear right now? Who will think about you? Who will realize you if you disappeared? If you go missing on earth, how many people will go on the run looking for you? Or are you going to be discovered that we have not seen him for almost three months beyond the way he is? Or because you are impactful, even government will send investigators to find where you are. How impactful are you? We need to rise up and say, Lord, build me for impact. Build me. Accept the Lord. Build the house. The labor in, her, in vain. Then they build it. Except unless the Lord watches over the city. The watchman awake, stays awake, but in vain. May God watch over your life. May you allow God to watch over your life. You are a city that is set upon a hill. That cannot be hidden. But that city, when it's set upon a hill, may God become the watchman. May you allow God to become the watchman of your life. Be accountable to God with all your actions. Be accountable to God with all your ideas. Be accountable to God with everything that you do. And let me tell you something. God will bless you. As you are listening right now, I want you right now to make a, a, a prayer point and say, Lord, build me for impact. And as you pray, after this uh, 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 session, as you pray, ask God to build you for impact. And when, when you have asked God to build you for impact, rise up now and begin to build. Rise up and begin to build. Don't be a prayer warrior. God is not looking for prayer warriors. God is looking for people who rise up and, and, and have impact in their nation. People are waiting for somebody to rise up. May you be the one who your nation has been waiting for. My name is Reverend Abel Dube uh, from Power Word today. God bless you. Shalom.